The Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Is this thing worth it in 2024? Yes. Easy. So this is a video I've been wanting to make for quite some time and quite frankly, I didn't know how to record this. So might as well just do it. <laughs> and I made notes, crazy. Let's go back in time a little bit. The Blackmagic Pocket 4K was released April 9th, 2018. This is six whole years ago and time flies. And to put this into perspective, this was released the same year as a Canon T7i. And the only reason I bring that up is because the first camera I ever owned, well, my first DSLR I've ever owned was the Canon T5i. So the T number I series holds a special place in my heart. At the time, there wasn't really anything much like this on the market. This has 13 stops at dynamic range, Blackmagic RAW, ProRes, Side note, isn't in the newest releases, the Pixis or the Blackmagic full frame, which, you know, everyone has their opinions on that. 4K up to 60 frames a second, 1080p in 120 frames a second. You do have to do a few things to make that work, but it is still there and I've used it totally fine. Dual native ISOs till this day still gets regular updates. Like there's an update that came out and makes it like an overkill webcam, which is pretty cool. So all this is, Amazing. <laughs> Even in today's market, this is a huge package. Between then and now, Blackmagic has released a plethora of cameras. So we had the 6K, the 6K Pro, the 6K G2, the Cinema Full Frame L mount, which as an L mount user is very appealing to me. And finally, the Pixis, also 6K full frame. So that being said, to this day, I still have my trusty Blackmagic Pocket 4K. So I shot mini docs. Wedding films, business profiles. So this has been talked about to death, but this camera has its limitations. What are they? We'll start off with the lack of image stabilization, which granted has been kind of fixed by a firmware update, which now records gyro. So it records all the shake uh, data and then in DaVinci Resolve and only in DaVinci Resolve, you're able to switch on gyro mode in, in your stabilization settings and smooth out your footage from there. No autofocus. The screen sucks. The screen is bad. It's a bad screen and I hate it. It doesn't pop out. The, it's super dim. So if you're using it outside, good luck. And that all that to be said again, like I did use it like this outside in the sunniest days possible. Actually, one of the best videos I think I shot was me and my wife's honeymoon trip with this camera. I had it completely stripped down with just my 18 to 35 Sigma lens and the camera. And it, it did, you know, and it was fine. I just had to get into weird, awkward positions and, and hold my hand over the monitor to make it happen. The battery, the battery sucks. And this is why I have this super awkward shaped camera because I also have the battery grip. I also have a V-mount battery as well, but I actually prefer the battery grip set up in the V-mount, so I still have access to the back monitor. This camera also has pretty bad low light performance. And if you're buying this camera for low light, don't do that. But you're able to get things like speed boosters. I have a speed booster and you're able to put your, your EF lenses on the speed booster. And it, I think it brings it down um, 0.6 stops or is it just six stops? Someone correct me. You're able to go from an F1.8 to an F1.2, giving you plenty of low light. And I've used that so many times and so when people complain about the low light i just say get yourself a speed booster because honestly it turns this camera into quite the low light beast so i'm sure there's a larger list of negatives with this camera but like everyone says and everyone has to preface with the black magics all of that can be bypassed with the stellar image quality that comes out of this camera considering this is a camera that was released in 2018 and since then we've had stuff like the sony a7s4 fx3 cameras are like triple the price. I still think that this camera holds a candle to those cameras. There's just something super satisfying about shooting Blackmagic RAW. I guess the question I'm gonna answer now is, should you buy the Blackmagic Pocket 4K in 2024? And I would say yes. And that's for the simple reason that it's a, you know, a great little camera with quite a ton of stuff packed jam-packed into this thing with a beautiful image quality and if you're really wanting to get into the short film filmmaking world on a super strict budget i would say 
this is the camera to do the job for you. Just bringing yourself to the next level. I think this camera, you know, can be worth it for some people. But there's also cameras like the Lumix S5 Mark IIX X or the, just the S5s alone. Look at the size difference. <laughs> and, and I'd say you're able to get pretty well the same image if you were to mess around with it quite a bit um, on this camera than you are to get on this camera. I'm gonna say this a lot on my channel. You don't have to buy anything. If you're happy with what you have, use that. So I'm gonna end the video with this. This camera got me into filmmaking. It got me into seriously thinking about what I shoot before I shoot it. And to me, that will always be worth it. Um, I don't use it nearly as much as I used to. And maybe I will again, if I can get myself a sweet set of EF Cine Primes that I could also use with my Lumix S5s. And then I would totally pick up this camera and use it more. So I wanna thank you all so much once again for watching and again, for just supporting the channel uh, by watching the videos, liking and commenting. It, it truly means a lot to me. So hopefully you'll stick around and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye now.